Hey train fans, I'm Rocky Canyon Arrow and this is my Rockwell Canyon Road. We're now into mid-August and it's been a while since I've given an update and I've done a lot to the railroad lately so it's time for an update. Alright, first thing that we got going on here, we got number 360. Our little toot here uh, is back in action. Now, if you recall in my one of my previous videos, uh, I had the engine running and it had a pretty bad stutter to it. Uh, and that's because the gears had cracked. Um, a few of you suggested that I try using the time-honored tradition of putting brass sleeves on the gears. And uh, I was hesitant to do that because I had read elsewhere that um, there's not room in those motor blocks for the black, uh, brass sleeves to fit. However, uh, as you can see, there is room uh, and it's working quite well. Uh, there is one gear that the gear uh, teeth are actually a little bit stripped. Uh, so I'm going to have to get some new wheels for it anyways, but at least it can run for a while. Um, while this video is being taken, uh, that engine actually ran for a good four hours that day. So I'm pretty happy with that. So again, that's a USA Trains 44 tonner. They're out of production for quite a while now, uh, but it's a neat little engine. And uh, there's still a few parts available at Charles Rowe uh, and Malden Mass for them. Uh, but not much left, so I don't know. I, hopefully I can keep it going for as long as I can. And uh, the paint scheme on that engine is the, is inspired by the New Hampshire Central Railroad. And it's number 360, and they have one uh, that locomotive actually does exist at Calmly Scenic Railroad in North Common, New Hampshire. Uh, so it's kind of based off of that, but I've changed the lettering to reflect the Rockwall Canyon Railroad instead of the New Hampshire Central Railroad. But it's the paint, same paint scheme. So... Here we are coming along into St. Patrick's, and uh, that is primarily what this video is going to entail today, our major changes to the St. Patrick's uh, facility here. Um, if you recall, I have a little freight yard that we're just entering into right now, and then off behind, like above that right now, is my passenger terminal. Now, I haven't really been happy with where the passenger terminal is. Um, that area just, just uh, gets a lot of sun, um, <laughs> it's kind of kind of damp there and weedy. Um, not really a great place to park um, all my, my RDC bud liners and nice passenger cars. Um, I kind of want to have a better place for them, maybe some place to have them be uh, sheltered a little bit better. Uh, the freight yard um, works out pretty well there, but I'm going to change the configuration on that as you'll see in a little bit as well. Well, the first step was to pull the passenger yard out of the uh, muck there. I used my tractor, and I ended up pushing it all the way across the yard and brought it over to the Rockwell Canyon area. And I have a little shed over there, so it's going to kind of um, set in front of that. I just sits on some planks to push it up and over, and there it rests. It hasn't really moved far from there. Uh, all right, and back in time, uh, we go back to the passenger yard where it used to be, and we're heading along off to Dolph Boot. I sure, do, I sure do love the way that engine looks with those uh, little Baroxo hopper cars. It's a neat little set. And as we head off into Dampf Boot, which uh, of course in German means steamboat, uh, we are planning on adding a kind of a German-themed uh, railroad station in that area. Uh, kind of give it a little, little flair. Hopefully have some facade on that brown section back there. Kind of make it look a little more finished. Uh, but there's so much to do on the railroad, and uh, you can't do everything at once, so it's always things to look forward to, get to getting done. We also have a brand new station and a freight house coming in to Pont Rochot here. Uh, the current building is actually going to be repainted and brought over to St. Patrick's at some point, but uh, there's actually a siding in there now in the high grass. It's a little hard to see, but I'm going to go in there with some of that landscaping fabric and try to keep that grass from coming back again. <laughs> Make sure that the ballast is uh, nice and clean this time. And here we are coming up into the Bloomton district here. I have to get the switch for Bloomton Quarry and then, uh, which hasn't quite finished yet, and then off through Bloomton Heights, the station. And now the train's already made it around to Rockwell Canyon, uh, where it's gonna take the high line up the steep hill here, which is about a Probably about a 4% grade up the steepest point there, which is, uh, well, not too bad for this little engine here. And we're going to go over the, the new bridge here, one of my new truss bridges that I've built. And around the corner and down the hill again. The crossing that we just went over 
is going to actually lead to some more industry. Uh, I do need to cut into the side of the hill a little bit to place the track in there, but um, something to do with the Braxo cars. I guess it could be a uh, you know um, some kind of a uh, facility or uh, maybe a mine. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Most of my train operations lately have just been continuous running, but I do like the idea of having some areas to have uh, industry for operations and switching cars and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of interest in that. All right, so back to St. Patrick's. Here you can see we've removed the passenger depot again. Uh, you can see what replaced it, just a straight shot. That's actually a 20-foot uh, stretch. So the new building of this section of the railroad is going to be a little bit larger, so I had to take some track from Rockwell Canyon and bring them over to St. Patrick's. I decided to replace some of my long straightaways with some nice new track from Train Lee, their Proline track. The Train Lee track, the Proline track on the right two tracks, are six foot long lengths of brass rail uh, with UV resistant ties. So I've been having some issues in the past in that really sunny area uh, with the ties from Aristocraft and USA trains uh, fading over time and eventually breaking down. Uh, Unlike the uh, LGB ties, which seem to last forever. So I'm hoping that the train lead ties are as, at least as good as the LGB ties, and I'm pretty sure they will be. Since I have some elevated sections over in St. Patrick's, I decided to use those p uh, shorter pieces of track from uh, Rockwell Canyon uh, in those places so they would be better supported. I also went over with uh, some black crystoleum and painted the ties uh, to help them be a little more UV resistant. Um, that seems to work pretty well for me. All right, so prior to laying this uh, crushed stone here, one and a half inch crushed stone, I laid down a thick barrier of uh, weed block. Uh, and then we'll put the track on top of that, and then we'll add a, a half inch crushed stone uh, between the ties, and then eventually top it off with a three eighth inch blue stone. Back in Rockwell Canyon, we have our Alco S4 hauling a string of open hopper cars and a Boston main caboose. And they're making their first way around the track here uh, after replacing the rails. Uh, you see those Proline tracks, we're just getting onto them right now. Uh, it's a flex track, so it's actually kind of curved right into the um, existing curve that we had there. You can see a few little scraps of track out in the, uh, in the gravel there waiting to get cleaned up. Uh, but much more smoothly uh, running through the line there. You can see the, the sun racing across those rails, just how smooth they are now. What an improvement. All right, so back over at St. Patrick's, I've uh, rehabilitated whatever track I could that needed to get painted, and um, you can see I've got a double track uh, running around through here now. So a lot more um, stuff that can be done now. Um, more operations and switching can be done over at St. Patrick's than uh, ever before. Um, eventually, I'm going to have a little spur off to the right um, on the outer curve uh, that's going to head up the hillside a little bit. We'll get to that uh, as time comes, but uh, for now, here's a, a successful rounding of the uh, the inner curve, uh, which is great to see. Now I'm stepping onto the raised track bed and uh, eventually crossing over to the right side and heading off forward to off boot again. So this is on the north end of my property, and it's a fairly sunny spot. You can see I have my little easy up there. Uh, it's really a lifesaver on you know, an August day. Uh, you can have any kind of sunshine. So here we go. We're going to go through with a, a little longer freight train now. I've got my, my uh, heavy-duty Jeeps out here. And we're going to try out that outer loop for the first run around here. And uh, stepping across the remnant of the, the tables here and onto the ground. Making the way around the loop. So the loop is kind of a compound radius. Um, it starts off at 20 foot diameter and then it gets a little tighter, probably down to around 16 foot diameter. And then it opens up again to something a little bit wider than 20 foot. So maybe more like 25 or 30 foot diameter as it gets into that point right now. Uh, there is a little bit of a grade to it. It's heading downhill right now. Um, coming into the curve, it's a little bit uphill. Um, probably going to be a little bit of a fuss with live steam, but um, generally happy with it. The, the the curves are gentle enough, and the grades are minimal. That um, you know, even without radio control, the live steam should be able to make it through there. Um, just a little bit of slowing down, and whatnot. But um, so here we are again, 
stepping out into that nice uh, pro line track. I, I really, really uh, like that track. It's good stuff. And the pricing was uh, fairly comparable. Um, if you shop around uh, for their sales, um, it, it's worth waiting for. And uh, especially get those six foot long lengths. Um, man, it makes, a, it makes a big difference. Uh, it just helps uh, bridge any of the imperfections in your row bed. Um, and it sounds pretty cool too. So I, I still like to get some more stone in there. I can see it's really thin. Um, a lot of the 3 8 uh, ballast that I use is, is, you know, kind of been um, lost to <laughs> the winter and whatnot and moving things around. But uh, eventually this summer I'll get another load of that material and finish it off a little bit. But even the rock walls here need to get um, freshened up a bit because I've added tracks on the outside and I need to, to you know, build them up a little bit more so they actually can do their work. And here we are coming across the the uh, Rockwell Canyon Viaduct. It's our steel viaduct. It's actually one of my friends in college uh, welded, welded this up for me uh, quite a few years ago. But actually, I think it was a 2016 now. Uh, so this bridge has been hanging on for a while. The lumber on that bridge actually came from a neighbor of mine at work uh, who does deck repairs. Uh, he had done a composite deck and had a whole bunch of... Uh, pressure treated lumber that um, came from a fairly decent deck that uh, was just being renovated for uh, for that improvement. And so I was able to take that lumber for free and save him the uh, fees for having it disposed. So it worked out well for everyone. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, it's still going strong. And uh, as we pass through Bloomington, we're heading on to a newer section out the back there. Actually, used to have a loop there at, at Bloomington, and that was the end of the line for the longest time. Uh, but now it continues on all the way across the yard, making a sort of a giant horseshoe now. So as we slowly drag through Pont Rochot, again, you can see the, the weeds coming through on the backside, which I, I have kind of a love-hate with that because I was so worried about it being thin on the backside, but now that I see some vegetation growing back there, it's you know pretty confident that I'm not going to have a lot of erosion or anything uh, because those roots will hold it all together now. All right, so back here at St. Patrick's, we're going to make it around the loop again. And again, uh, there's obviously no ballast, so the track's a little soft in places, but uh, go through slow enough and the trains do just fine. And, and everything's actually pretty, pretty well leveled out. Um, even without the ballast, I was able to get the stone to cooperate. <laughs> Um, the inside track in particular is, is really uh, working quite well. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. So I think somewhere in this area where the engines are approaching right now is where the, the passenger station will be uh, planted for the uh, St. Patrick's area. Now the, the reason for calling this St. Patrick's is actually kind of a, kind of a funny story. Uh, there's a lot of clover in the area. Uh, but it was not the clover that um, inspired the name. It was actually the snakes. Uh, of course, if you know the story of St. Patrick, uh, when he came into Ireland, uh, it was uh, infested with snakes, and he was um, somehow or other credited with uh, uh, ridding the island of uh, the snake problems. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so here it is. I couldn't be happier with uh, the way things are coming out now. And... Uh, just a much, much better arrangement than it was before. The track's going to be more solid year-round, and it's just it's a more inviting uh, layout than it was before. I mean, even from the yard, it looks better. Um, and it's sort of the first place you come to when you're seeing the railroad, so it's good to have that curb appeal uh, straighten out a little bit more. And, and I can add a little more landscaping to it. I'm thinking about more shrubs and rock walls and so forth. Alright train fans, thanks for watching. My name is Rocky Canyonero and that's how we do trains around here.